Hi Tangent Template users, this is Isaac. Catherine and I are right now getting ready to drive out to Las Vegas to go speak at ASD. But before we go, I wanted to show you really quick how you can make a print ready PDF and then also show you an update I made to Tangent Templates. So let's get started. Now what I would like to do, I want to create a dream journal. The size of my book is going to be 8 by 10. I'm going to have about 150 pages. I would like to use cream paper for this. I personally like the look of cream as opposed to white. And then I'm going to select no bleed because we don't need it for this particular book. And my title is going to be My Amazing Dreams. And then the subtitle is going to be a journal for dreamers. And here I have some lorem epsom for the back cover, for copy on the back cover. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do, let's go to tangent templates and let's look for journal paper. I'm going to select this, have an 8 by 10, 150 pages. We're going to select no bleed because it's not needed. Download this and let's triple check that all our pages are in place. Yes, so here is our interior file. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go to the KDP helper. So this is where I've made some updates. I'm going to select 8 by 10, 150, cream, no bleed, continue. The new thing I've added here are print ready cover templates. Really cool. So it's a PNG file at 300 DPI ready to be used in any of your graphics program, whether it be Photoshop, Canva, GIMP, or whatever program you want to use to create your covers. So let's download this. Now this is very similar to what you get from KDP. So they also have a tool to create print ready PDFs templates. And we can take a look at that really quickly. So let's go. 8 by 10, 150, cream. Now, one of the issues I found with the PNG files from this tool is that they can be really large. This particular one's okay, but if you do the 8.5 by 11, some of them are like 50 megabytes, and that's really large, and you can't upload it to online graphic tools because the image is way too large. So, we can take a peek at theirs. So, this is what KDP gives you. And you can see it tells you the trim size. It lets you know this is the front and this is the back. And then it also tells you where the trim line is going to be and then where the fold is. So here's what we have at Tangent Templates. And you can see it's got a transparent image. I've added some additional information to make it easier for you for researching. So you can see the actual cover size here. That's the full cover. It's 16 inches point six three by 10.25 inches. The, and then it has it in pixels. Also, there's a note to let you know if spine text is allowed. So according to KDP, if you have a book that is under 100 pages, they don't recommend putting text on the spine because it's just not large enough and the text is going to be too small to read. So to make it easy for you, we have a little note here in the image itself. Let's go on and open this up in Photoshop. So when I create interior files, I primarily use Illustrator because of the advantage you get with working with vector objects. However, when I create covers, I prefer Photoshop because it doesn't need to be vectorized. The cover can be 100% rasterized. So here we are. We've opened up our PNG template in Photoshop and let's inspect it. You can see it's 300 DPI and the exact inches that you need. So let's see here. Also, this bit right here is your margin. So just know that anything important has to be inside this area. However, if you have a background image, you want it to bleed all the way to the very end. So the other nice thing about the colors I chose here is that they work on black and white. So that's kind of cool. All right, let's delete this. Now, when I work in Photoshop, the first thing I like to do is set up my guides. So right here you see a ruler. If you don't see it, you could commit Command R or Alt R, I believe, if you're on Windows. Once you see this, what you can do is you can click on the ruler and then drag out a guideline. So what I'm going to do is set up all my guidelines before we get started. And it makes working in Photoshop a lot easier. Okay, so we got it in place. And now, let's see here, we can hide this and see that everything's in place. Okay, so now let's get a background image. 
One place I like to go for background images is Unsplash. It is an awesome place to find free public domain images at high resolutions. So let's see, the name of our book is My Amazing Dreams. So let's call it Dream. Well, let's search for dream images. Here you can see collection of images and I'm gonna use this one right here. So let's download it. And you can see there's a quick note, crediting isn't required, but is appreciated and allows photographers to gain exposure. So if you like, if you use this image, it's probably a good idea to go on and put this guy's name somewhere maybe on the back or somewhere in the book so people know that this front cover was taken by this guy right here. And so let's see, here is our image. Let's go back to Photoshop and we're gonna drag this here. There we go. And then what I'm going to do I'm gonna scale this just a little bit higher so it fills the whole area. For an image like this, it's okay if you scale it up a little bit. You don't wanna scale it up too much or else it will look pixelated. But in this case, I think we're okay. So let's see here. Now, I'm gonna drag this underneath and here you can see our template. Now I really like this boat, this is really cool. And I want this to be on the front. So what I'm gonna do is go to Edit, Transform, where are you at? Actually, I have to select this. Edit, transform, and then flip horizontally. There we go, just where I want. And I'm gonna place this, uh, let's see here. I'd like it if it was right there. I'm gonna scale this up a little bit more. All right, so now let's get started. Let's get our title, I'm gonna copy this. This is how I like to work in Photoshop. Add my text here. So let's see, right there, then I'm gonna copy this. I hold Option and drag it down. Let's go to our Dream Journals, right here. There we go. And what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm going to bold it so it really stands out. There we go, that looks better. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Um, actually, stretch it up just a bit. Okay, and then Dream Journals. Let's make smaller, and let's make sure it's using regular. It is, probably could go lighter, but I'm gonna leave it where it's at. Let's see here. Um, ooh, forgot one more thing. What I can do is, here is our center line. So I'm just going to put that right there, just so I know where the center's at. And let's see here. Let's see, I'm gonna drag it, uh, that's pretty cool. Put it right there. Now let's go on and put the back copy. Copy this lorem epsom text. Go back here and place it right there. Give it plenty of margins. Paste it and I'm gonna make this, uh, let's see, make it 14. It's white and there we go, cool. So let's see here. Okay, just making sure everything's in check. Here's where our barcode's gonna be, so we gotta leave this place blank, this area blank. And then what I'm going to do now is to make sure this text in the back is readable, I'm going to put a little black bar here. So let's see, there we go. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, just to darken it just a little bit so it's easier to read. Then what I'm gonna do is take this title here. Let's make it vertical and I'm gonna shrink it we can place this right in the center right here and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller to make sure there's enough margin space in that area right there so it looks pretty good let's see is that our title and let's center this so what I'm gonna do is center Okay, and let's see. And that's our print ready PDF cover. Go back to tangent templates and we can go to more tools and we can download one of these cover panels. So what I'm gonna do is download this PNG. I could download the PSD, but I'm gonna use the PNG for now because it's quicker. And here's our cover panel. Let's go on and stick this right here. I can make this a little bit smaller. Let's see, maybe place it about right 
right there. Now another thing I can do is hide this, go back to here, and I'm gonna show you a really cool Photoshop trick. Just using the quick selection tool. Now I'm doing this super quick, so bear with me. Let's see here. I'm gonna try to do this super quick. And let's see here. Guessing that's good enough. All right, so now what we can do is move this above our panel. And now you can see the boat kind of breaks into this cloud panel right here. Gives it kind of a neat effect, make it gives it a little bit of depth to it. So just want to kind of show you that real quick. And let's see here. Yep, that looks pretty good. So there we go. There is our cover. Okay, so we have our cover and we are ready to export this as a PDF. One of the things I'd like to do is group everything into a folder. So cover, and then I'm going to duplicate this. So this is kind of a quick way to get a print ready PDF. Now what I'm gonna do is hit Command E or Alt E if you're on a PC. And what that does, that flattens everything into a single image. So now this is an image. There's no transparency. There's no fonts to mess with. It's just an image all flattened together. Now what we can do is export this as a PDF. So I'm going to go save Photoshop PDF, deselect layers, very important. You can save it as a copy, uh, name it whatever you want, put it wherever you want, and then go on and hit save. Now here are your export settings. By default, everything should be set, so you shouldn't have to mess with anything. If you do, go on and leave a comment in the thread on Facebook and we can help you figure out what the issue is. So go on and click Save PDF and let's see here. And here is our PDF that we created in Photoshop. Now let's see if we can create this same image in Canva. So let's go to Canva. And we're going to use custom dimensions, select inches. Let's go back to our KDP helper. And if you scroll down, you can see here are the dimensions you're going to enter in Canva. So let's go on and enter that. So here we go. Now, a really cool thing about Canva recently is that they have updated their systems. So they allow larger custom dimensions. Really cool. At this point, I think you can use Canva for just about all your print on demand projects. And the cool thing about it is I am using Canva, the free version. So this isn't the work version like Catherine has. She pays extra $10 a month so you can have more features. I just use the free version and it's actually pretty good for what you get. So let's see here. We're going to upload our images. Upload that one. That one. And that one. So let's wait for it to upload. Oh, I guess it, it's already done. Cool. So let's go on. Now, with Canva, when you drag an image, if you place it in the center, it's going to put the image, it's going to place the image on the canvas, and then here you can scale it. However, if you drag the image and you kind of get this like upper border, it will fill the entire space. That means the image is a background. And so it's locked in place. So what we're going to do is go on and flip that. So there we go. So that's a little bit easier to work with. However, with this template file, you don't want this as a background because it kind of Canva gets a little weird with it. So I recommend just scaling it up to the correct size and using that as your guide. I'm on my trackpad right now, so bear with me. There we go. Now you can see it there. Okay, cool. And um, what we're going to do now is add our text. that 
subheader. There we go. Drag this out. Make this white. Cool. Let's get this going about there. So we can place it there. And then let's get our copy in the back. cool and then we can change the alignment here so that's how they do it and let's see here actually let's make it maybe 14 yeah that's a little bit easier to read now what we can do we can get rid of this we don't need it anymore oh actually one more thing I forgot and what I can do I can select this undo yikes there we go okay so let's hold option and drag this out and you can make a copy of this and I'm going to rotate, rotate this 90 degrees. There we go. Make it a little bit smaller. It's probably good. And then what we're going to do is position. We're going to move it to the middle and the center. And there we go, right there. So I'm going to delete this. Now, with Canva, we can put some graphic design, some elements to here. Now, when you're dealing with images from Canva, make sure on the licensing because Canva is a little confusing. If it says free, chances are it's good. But if you select these three dots and select here, here you can get the full detail of the image. If it says use it in all your images, that means you're good to go. If it says a one-time license, let's see if we can find one that does that. Let's see here, I'm gonna scroll down to this one right here, for example. Let's look at this, one-time use. It says one-time use. $1. So you can't really use this for print on demand unless you pay for the extended license. At that point, then you will have to look further into the licensing to see what's doable. But so we're just going to stick with free. I'm going to put this little box right here and I'm going to make it black and also send it behind. So let's see here if we go to position back, back. And now we can kind of move this out to there and then what you can do you can add some transparency to it but I don't know if this is going to create problems with KDP because I don't know if this is going to rasterize it at the end Photoshop does a great job because it just rasterizes everything basically it turns everything into an image then it converts it to a PDF Canva I believe they use both vector and rasterize so I'm going to delete this for now but what we can do I'm selecting the background we can adjust the levels here. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker. Actually, what we can do is add a little bit of contrast to it and then make it a little bit darker. And so it makes it a little more dreamy. So let's see here. It makes it easy to read the background. So there we go. Here is, and this is a little hard to read because of this light. I can put a black border behind it or maybe just move it up a little bit to about there. So, and now what you want to do select download and you want to download as PDF print. This is very important. So you download that and you have a print ready PDF created in Canva. So pretty cool. Okay, took a while to download. So here is our PDF from Canva. This is ready to be uploaded to KDP. Hopefully if I have time, I will make a more in-depth video on creating covers. I just want to show you really quick how you can do it in Photoshop or Canva. All right. Thank you.